Are we ready? Okay, welcome everyone to the January 6, 2022 Greenway Committee. We're glad to have everyone here. This is a virtual meeting and we'll be meeting from now till 5 p.m. First of all, I welcome all of the committee members and I will, as I mention your name, please unmute and say hi. We are first person is Vice Chair Sunny Carr. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Sunny. And the next person is Kenny Armstrong. Hello. Thank you, Kenny. Um, Kristen Earhart. Hello. Thank you, Kristen. And our secretary, Richie Roselle. Hello, happy new year. Thank you, Richie. And Elida Woods. Hi there. Thank you, Elida. And last but not least, Mike Z. Hey, how you doing? We're doing great, Mike. Thanks for Good coming. Thing. It doesn't look like we have any offici ex officio members. Is there anybody out there that I'm not aware of? Just join hey. Chris, Chris Joel here. And uh, Jack Henderson is here from Riverlink. Oh, good. Thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it. Um, and we have Lucy, our, our staff person. And we have... Hi, everyone. And we have her uh, new employee, Anna Sexton. Anna, can you say hi? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Hello. Happy to be here. Glad to have everybody here. Thank you for coming. Um, first of all, we have an agenda. I have made one little change in the agenda that you received from Lucy. I have moved our old business about the Greenway and etiquette, etiquette trail etiquette campaign up after we... Um, deal with the minutes of the approve the minutes of the last meeting and that's because Lydia has to um, Kristen has to leave early I'm sorry <laughs> I'm losing my place in my notes so um, does anybody have any additional items that they need to add to the agenda Okay, not hearing any. We will accept and approve these this agenda. And first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our last meeting, which was October 7th. Do I have a motion to approve them? So Hopefully moved. everybody here. Thank you, Mike. A second? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Sonny. The minute, let's, let's see. All in favor? Aye. Say, raise your hand. All right. That has passed. Thank you. So we will move on next to old business, which is Greenway and Trail Etiquette Campaign. We have not spent a whole lot of time on that, but um, we have. Here's, we have um, Kristen has developed a little ditty that I think is a really good one. And Kristen, do you want to uh, report that to us? Report the ditty? <laughs> um, I don't have it. I don't have it on the off the top of my head, but um, I can look it up and report in a moment. I think it was in our meeting minutes. If I'm not mistaken. I remember looking at it somewhere. 
Um, oh, goodness. Well, one of the things, while you're thinking about it. Um, right, I got it. Oh, good, good. All Here's right. the ditty, the limerick. Uh, limerick, be yeah. Be polite, pass on the right. When on wheels you pass, have some class. Use your bell or just yell on your left. Okay, the only, I like that, but the only question I have is you said pass on the right. Um, pass on the right. But I think you're supposed oh, you to want pass. pass on the left, so there's a major yeah. problem there. Yes, you're absolutely <laughs> right about that. <laughs> thing to think about it right <laughs> right it's easy to get confused on that but um, i i like right. it don't i think pass on the right don't pass on the right pass no, on the left we got to change the whole thing scrap it it's got to be positive you don't want to say don't <laughs> <laughs> so we need All to right, work on that, that one. <laughs> yeah um i think we need to develop a budget which we'll need to find out how much it would cost to develop signs. Isn't that right, Lucy? We have to yeah. have some signage. Yeah, and um, if you, I heard that you wanted a web, a web presence yeah. and maybe a video. I uh, think so. We do need costs so that I can ask for the money. Because we're probably going to have to. Um, get some funding from the city for all of that. And Lucy, is there a breakdown of the costs for the signs that they put in the um, Greenway now? Um, in the, which Greenway? In, in the, um, on the river, the River Arts District. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of signs. Right. That's why I was if there was a breakdown that that we could look at some of the signs that of the type I that think we like. It would be easier to just call a sign company, honestly. Okay. Yeah. yeah, those papers are closed. I mean the project's closed already and right. And I think you're gonna want to tailor the type of sign you want too. So you know Yeah, we've talked about maybe having something like the Burma shade signs where you just have a short one comment and then put it down have a you go ride or walk a little ways and then you have another comment just to kind of remind you and i would think we would want them at each one of the intersections major intersections where people will be joining in okay and Claudia, we, we talked about kind of a trial period with cheap, cheaper signs to just get it started. I don't know if that's still the plan. Yeah, I don't know. It um, You mean like something like those plastic signs I think we were talking about? Yeah, just to get it started, see how, see how they're received before we commit to any, you know, installing. Major expense, yeah. Yeah, you know, the, kind of fine tune the message too. If if the limerick right. needs changing, we can change it. I just I, changed it to walk on your right instead of pass on your right, and now it makes a lot more sense. Oh, it does. But it's yeah. not actually. I don't even know if we need to have the first two lines if we do it at all. Oh, I think it's good. Because I think it's really good to reinforce proper behavior, you know? And we'd also talked about including perhaps like a QR code to a website yeah. with like updated information. So those could be on those little plastic yard sign things. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you, girl. <laughs> Sorry. So anything else anyone can think of? I think if we had some a video showing people doing the proper thing, it would be really good. The proper, you know, someone coming up on somebody else and saying on your left or ringing their bell or something. Uh -huh. 
I can tell you um, in the last month, I've had two people contact me about etiquette problems on the Greenway. Well, did they tell you what kind of problems they were having? One person was hard of hearing. So they um, said that they had a hard time with people rushing by. And the other one um, was just concerned about bikes going by too fast. Going too fast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that kind of boils it down. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Richie. So I was just gonna say speed limits, um, which should definitely be part of the sign package. Speed limits? A, a 15 yeah, I think it's a yeah, speed limit, yes. 15? <clears throat> I think that's what has been used already on how many creeks is 15. Okay. No fast than 15. It's hard to quantify though. I don't know how fast I'm going when I ride my bike. But I think messages about slowing down and, you know, keeping to the right and slowing down seem to be the two main, you know, if everybody does that, we'll be okay. Right. Re something about respecting each other yeah well there's certainly good examples in other places yeah i've seen some really good ones i have a question with regard to the person that was hard of hearing that complained how could you alleviate that problem other than them like wearing a mirror or something um on a hat where they could see who was coming well if people were going slower and making space that would help. Yeah, if people just weren't rushing up on people in general. Okay. Yeah, I think, and making sure that they get over enough. You know, this last couple of weeks during the holidays, the greenways have been really, really busy. And um, Mike and I went down there with his walker and had him walking. And there were a couple of times when I mean, I just had to get behind him because there were so many people coming both directions. And it was not any problem with somebody just stopping. It was just different speeds that people were going and just the overabundance of people out there, which can be a problem. I guess it'll be so really helpful when the other side opens and that'll disperse some of the crowds, hopefully. I think it will, Sonny. I think that will help a lot. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that we need to be talking about with this on etiquette? I mean, one of the idea? largest issues that I've seen is people with dogs on long leashes, um, especially for cyclists, but really anybody who's moving faster than walking speed, they really can on long leashes create a big hazard. Yeah, I think it would maybe something about uh, keeping the dog on a short leash. I don't think it should be one of those retractable leashes where you let the dog get as far away as they can. Because, you know, a lot of times the dog doesn't know any better, so they'll be all the way across the, the um, trail. Yeah, and those retractable leashes, which I admit I use, are just a, a narrow black wire that you can't see. So the dog can right. be on one side of the um, walkway and you're on the other side, and you can't see that there's cord going between the two. Right. Until you're right on top of it. Right. Um, is Are those even legal in this city? Isn't there a requirement that a leash be no longer than five feet? I haven't heard of it. I, I that that was in my last couple cities I've lived in. I have no idea what the regulation is here. I know that in some places, like, um, I'm trying to remember, there was, I think it was when you take your dog to the vet, a lot of times they said no retractable leashes allowed. Right. I don't know if there's a city ordinance that says how long a leash can be. I, I, I don't, don't think there is. I don't think there is. Really? I don't think so, no. Mm -mm. Because the pet stores sell all 
lengths of leashes for one thing. This is true, but like I said, the last two cities I've lived in, every, I, everybody has a long leash, but technically the leash can't be more than five feet because otherwise there's at some point, what's the purpose of having a leash if it's, you know, 20 feet long? Most leashes that I've seen come in six foot increments. I feel like, Mike, that there is a six foot leash law mm -hmm. here. I feel like I've heard about it. Um, you're right. No, I mean, I have a 15 foot leash. Yeah. Um, I don't walk my dog on the greenway, um, only in the neighborhood. Um, and it's not a retractable, it's a big piece of webbing. But um, if I see a police car, I always pull her into six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it Lucy, be could you find out if there is a law? Yeah, I will find out. Well, okay. at best, we're making suggestions for etiquette anyhow. Like, we could phrase it in a way that's like, it's not like it's the law. You have right, you know, right. We could, you know. It's recommended. It, like, keep your dog close to you, whatever. Put in another stanza into this poem. <laughs> My dog. Turn yeah. into a sonnet. And then. <laughs> That's right. We need a sonnet, an etiquette sonnet. That would be good. <laughs> um, I just I just pulled up the city of Asheville code. It says eight feet in length. Oh. It says what? Eight feet. Oh, okay. Which is pretty far. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a little too long for a greenway. Yeah, that's it's, almost the width of the greenway. Yeah, I, I think mean, maybe. we don't even have to mention anything about the specific li um, yeah. link, but rather just like keep your, your a recommendation. I think five feet is plenty, don't you? Or do you think it should be shorter? Arms length. <laughs> Carry your pets on the greenway. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't there signs um, that say, say pets must be on a leash here and there anyway? I know there are in the city parks. I wonder if you couldn't add something, you know, at the location where those signs are just stating, um, you know, curb your dog when passing or when some, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, keep the dog within an arm's length during um, when there's a lot of people on the greenway. Or okay. keep, keep, keep your dog in an eight foot leash if that's. Have there been many complaints about this? Or it's just a, you're thinking through all the... It's, it's a actually, problem. I have a dog and I know it's a problem. And I Yeah, I have a friend who was trying to get around somebody with the dog and went into the grass and now is a paraplegic. Wow. Yikes. Riding his bike. He went oh. head over heel. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's not good. Um, yeah, so okay. we need to raise it, I guess, just to like be mindful of other people's space. Keep your pets close to you. Yeah, I think that's a good comment. To me, it brings up an issue of, you know, if we have so much information or if we're going to disperse it like Burma shave signs or is there going to be sort of a, you know, one thing that has a number of items like dog speed, bells, all that yelling. And then those reminders, I mean, I know a lot of parks have sort of a basic information sign. It's hard to know where you'd put it, but because people get on yeah. it places, but I don't know, maybe that's, maybe more information could be on the website that people could, it, I'm just concerned about getting so much information there that. Um, yeah, I think a lot of times when you have a big sign with a lot of different rules or statements, they never get down all the way through them. Yeah. So that's one reason why I like the Burma shade idea yeah. because you're being reminded yeah. about and just have, you know, if you're riding a bike, you buy it so fast, you can't read it. Right. Now, if you're walking, even sometimes there, you're going by faster than you can read so unless you were to stop. So I think there could be a couple places where we put out a large list but i think for the most part i like the idea of the smaller signs right throughout the whole greenway yeah i okay. would say that each line of the limerick should be a different sign like the first sign says yeah. be light dot 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 and the next one says walk on the right okay also the issue i think functionally of placement because you've actually you've got the greenway and you've got the cycle track and to Claudia's point, you're moving at different speeds on different ones. So, like, 
different sizes in order to register it at those speeds. And um, one thing I saw that I thought was pretty clever was on, I think it's the East Coast Greenway that runs through Durham. Instead of a sign, which, you know, is planted in the ground and itself an obstacle and a safety issue, they had um, embedded uh, in the actual pathway some signage. And it was mostly just mile markers, but I guess there's a new kind of plastic that can withstand and printing that can withstand like travel. So it could be that you, instead of putting a sign along the side of each one, you could embed it in the place that your eyes actually a lot of times tend to be, which is down mm. at your feet or in front of your wheels. That's an interesting thought. We have to see how much it would cost. Oh, I guess it could be painted box. on the trail. That's another option. Okay. Well, we'll come back to this. Let's move on. Unless anybody has any other comments they'd like to make. Yeah. Lucy, was there ever a discussion about painting a stripe down the middle of the trail to keep people on one side? Because I know that I think it was the Swamp Rabbit that has that where... I know that's a long straightaway, so it kind of makes sense because people are going really fast. But I mean, just as a uh, as a cue to remind people, oh yeah, I'm kind of supposed to be on the right side here. I know that's a cost too. Yeah, I know there are there is one sign that I've seen on our trail already where it's real windy, and it says no passing because of the windiness, and you can't see what's coming up. Uh, from the other direction. Lucy, do you have any comments about the stripe on the trail? You're muted. <laughs> we don't have one at this time. Um, no one is talking about putting one in. Would okay. you like to elevate that to the Multimodal Transportation Commission? So what do y'all think? I Should we have a vote on it? I've been in, in Portland, Oregon. There are several greenways that have the divided, divided highway. And I found it very helpful, both when I was on a bike and also when I was walking. So I don't know. That could be, a, seems like it would be a fairly low cost mitigation, but mm -hmm. I liked it. I felt safer. I agree. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, particularly on a straightaway, I think it might be a problem on the curves. Why is that? Because you can't see around them. So you put a double yellow line on the curve. <laughs> I don't know. I, th I think the lines just remind people that it's a transportation yeah. corridor and not just a, a park that they're meandering through, you know. Yeah, good point. I would say the exception of that being in the stretches where there's the cycle track in addition to the greenway or path that it creates some confusion about wh what is what. I think if it, there's only the one option of the paved greenway surface, then a line can be helpful. But if you have a line surface and another line surface, I think it becomes less obvious where a person is meant to be by mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we need to talk about this some more. Is, okay. is, there, is there any indication for bicyclists that with that you're going if you're going fast, you should be on the bike path, and if you're going slow, you should be going on the MUP path? Is there any place that kind of defines where you should be going? I don't think there have been, but I think that's a good point. I think if anyone wants to go fast, they should be on the cycle track. And that even goes to people who are using um, scooters or skateboards. They can. Some of those can go pretty quick. And is there any place that indicates that, or there, maybe that's something yeah. we need to look at? There is just a general indication that the bicycle symbol on the cycle track, which is sort of, you know, 
across the board. Um, and my five-year-old sometimes asks why we're not on the cycle track when he's going, you know, three miles an hour. Um, and then I guess I'll just note that there is something to start to be aware of that's a more um, universal way of talking about speed and it's, you know, light lanes or it's called any number of different things, but it's, you know, the pathways for vehicles, bikes, e-bikes, all e-enabled uh, vehicles that are faster than, you know, you're, you're sort of walking and skating kind of speeds. And so there's this new terminology coming around that's not, not exclusive to bikes. It's just more about general light vehicles. I think we could have a sign that says faster riders should use cycle track. I think that would be a good thing to have. And maybe even a you can go fast and have a faster speed limit on that section. So I've seen a lot of people just going way too fast on the greenway. I don't think they're aware. Any other comments? I, I like what Richie said about maybe using stencils to complement the sign system. If we put a bunch of signs in, it'd be kind of cool to have stencils as well. Okay. So if you're looking down, you'll see them. If you're looking up, you'll see them too. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, the last time we talked, somebody mentioned roping in the parks department at this stage so that we don't have to you yes. know, do something and then ask permission. We can get them on board. Mm, good point. For, that is absolutely true. I forgot about that. And we now have a new parks director. So that might be, why don't we invite him to come to our meeting? He's not here yet. Um, when does he start? Late January. So we'll okay. we'll let him get his sea legs and then we can invite him. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Do we have any public comments from people? Is there any public attending this meeting that wants to make a comment? No, no public. Okay. I just want to make a note that I uh, called Jack Henderson, Jack Kennedy on the on the um, agenda. And so I am, I will make oh. sure to change that. <laughs> no worries, Kennedy. always. Be Sorry, Jack. Kennedy. <laughs> you do look like a Kennedy. You've got that dash of handsomeness. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy, for mentioning that. Okay, would you like, Lucy, to take over and do our staff updates for us? Sure. Um, so I included the Multimodal Transportation Commission spreadsheet, um, which will give you a lot of information on all the transportation projects that we are working on. Um, however, I'll give you a verbal report on the greenways that we're working on. Um, the French Broad River West is going great. Nothing big has happened there as far as our construction. I think maybe you might have noticed in the newspaper over the weekend that a large homeless camp that is on the property but technically not in the construction area was removed. Um, so that's good. There is one camp that is actually within the construction site that um, I think is abandoned. So it's being removed without displacing anyone. Uh, the Nasty Branch Greenway is moving forward. We're still working with our stormwater department on a couple of issues that they want to um, see uh, I don't know if they're necessarily wanting it changed right now. They're just trying to um, consider if there's a better answer to than what our designs have since the Central Asheville Watershed study has come out. That we've they've realized that this particular area uh, between Congress Street and um, Biltmore is a pretty heavy area for stormwater of the whole central Asheville watershed. So I guess we're um, looking at the technicalities of the plan a little harder, um, but we are 
still on course to finish up our permitting and we plan to begin construction in the spring. Uh, the Greenway co connector projects are at 65% um, designs. They're being reviewed by the DOT at this time. Um, no big news there. We do have a project page for that, um, which includes a video where um, our consultant and our capital projects manager and I are talking through the project um, and give you a verbal explanation of what's about to happen there. Um, so if anyone has any questions um, in your networks, you can steer them to that webpage. There's also a comment form that will come to me if anyone has any questions and I'll, and I'll answer them. Um, we, let's see, what other, what other project would you like to know about? Um, the North Rad Tip project, we're about to release the request for letter of interest uh, in the next, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Um, and that hopefully will be, we'll see some consultant working on that in the springtime. Um, bow catcher is nothing new has happened there. Uh, same with the Bacote Branch Greenway. And the close the gap plans are about to start their final round of public engagement. And I think in February, we plan to have the consultants come to the Greenway Committee to talk with you about our plan. And um, I, I think that all of you know that the patent, I mean, that the Amboy Road Bridge is going to have some retrofitted improvements to make it a little safer to walk and ride your bike on. I don't know what the timeline for that is yet. Uh, I didn't know that. Can you give us any more details on that? It's just they're using the existing roadbed to um, and narrowing the travel lanes so that one side of the bridge will have a wider space for bikes and pedestrians. And this will be the best that can be done until a new bridge is built when they are doing the Amboy Road redesign but that will be quite a ways away at this point. It's at least 10 years before they work on that project. Now, Lucy, I include, think that, that is part of the elevated part, right? It's going to be an elevated? Right. Okay. Lucy, can you, was there any headway made between the school system and the DOT with the bridge? the, the bri bridge towards Dixon, do you know if that ever went anywhere? I know that they met. They met with the principal. Of oh, Dixon. good. Good. No, I don't, I didn't get any notes from that meeting. Okay. I guess we I brought it up at the meeting we had with Kevin Moore. We brought it up uh -huh. and he said he would look into that. Right. Yeah, well, they, I can't remember. I wish I could remember the woman's name who contacted me, but I connected Dixon and them and they had a meeting and there Good. wasn't much I had to say but I hoped that something happened they just said they were going to look at it so I didn't know if you'd heard anything no I haven't heard anything since then I just know that they did contact the principal okay so, thank you uh, the city has applied for a grant through the MPO for a planning work project and it is to address the I-26 project as it um, enters into the central business district on the east side of the Jeff Bowen Bridge. Um, so it will take a look at addressing uh, the best way for uh, interstate project to come into a main street of a downtown area, meaning we're looking at hopefully slower speeds and tighter radiuses on the entrance ramps and also in that area. So um, going far as far down as West Haywood and Klingman. So about a, I don't know, a quarter mile on each side of, of the road, um, what we can do to make the pedestrian and bike 
facilities the safest that they can be and hopefully making uh, just a better circulatory system for all kinds of um, modes of transportation in that area. And also taking a look hopefully at um, design guidelines and, and future land use issues in that area as it will change what our downtown entrance looks like. So the city of Asheville's goal is to make a very safe place for everyone to come into town and also a very beautiful one. Good, because so, DOT wasn't really interested in making any changes on that. Right. That's um, good news. Well, actually they have made quite a few changes. Yeah. Um, um, Not as far speed as connecting to Hill Street and and improving the entrance, but unfortunately they've um, said the project stops right at Klingman. And so that Klingman Penn Avenue interchange is going to be a disaster because uh -huh. they, they can't go any farther because that's the end of the project. But yeah, it's great that they've, um, they've come a long way and I think they still have a distance to go. And I'm, uh, glad, yeah. I'm glad to hear that the city's is, is taking the lead on this. Yeah, so we submitted the grant um, December 22nd, and we don't know if we are, will be awarded the grant or not, but we'll see. I think that uh, the prioritization committee who was taking a look at the applications understood the need for it and, and received it fairly positively. So that was good news, yeah. And I think that's all my updates. Okay. Thank you, Lucy. Oh, I forgot the Swannanoa River Greenway is we're at 90% designs. Um, we had a technical meeting today with um, staff and addressed some of the stormwater issues and are going to be submitting it for permitting very soon. Great. Okay. Thank Lucy, you, Lucy. What's your gap uh, after French Broad West? Which greenway will we be able to walk on first? Swannanoa or Nasty Branch? That's a good question, Kenny, because they'll they'll be constructed around the same time. Um, I don't know. You want to place bets? Maybe they'll be finished at the same time. You got to stagger the ribbon cuttings, though. I know. going to wear us out all those ribbon cuttings <laughs> that'll be exciting <laughs> all right okay so the next thing is new business and i will go over we are required to do an annual report to the multimodal commission and um so i've started working on it and I will read what I've got so far. Did Lucy, did you send it to everybody? Yeah, I sent it. It's in the agenda and I just put posted a link to the document in the chat. Oh, okay. Have have any of you read it? No? Okay. Well then I'll read it real quickly. Let me turn on some heat here first. So my sister doesn't get hypothermia. You're like Senator Kane. On the highway. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. So, above the motor. So, first of all, I had a summary of what we have done. And I'll just read that quickly. We have had a busy, exciting year taking field trips to make sure all staff members or all members know where the greenways are and will be when they are on the ground. Making commitments, comments to NCDOT on what we hope to have when the I-26 project is finished and working with the consultants on the Close the Gap plan, which is greenways, ADA transition, and pedestrian master plans. And then I list our mission statement, which I I think most people already know what that is. And then we have to list our accomplishments. 
which I have put in bullet points. We held a number of field trips for committee members of already developed greenways, those in progress of development, and future greenways in the effort to educate committee members. The field trips include the French Broad River West, Broadway Reed Creek, Elsa's Bridge, Swannanoa River, and Nasty Branch. Listen to a presentation of the Buncombe County Greenway Plan. Attended several meetings of Asheville Unpaved. Advocated for funding in the city budget for future greenways. Reviewed the I-26 project of greenway connections and wrote two letters to Kevin Moore, project manager of the NCDOT I-26 project regarding requests for greenway connections at several streets in West Asheville and for streets and improvements we wanted, specifically a safer crossing of Brevard Road near Shelburne and I-240 exit, crossing of I-240 near Montford, crossing the I-240 on Bear Creek Road, improvements near the transfer station and improvements near Reed Creek Greenway. We also attended several, a virtual meeting with Kevin Moore the fur, to further discuss these requests. Advocated for renaming the east side of the French Broad River Greenway after Wilma Dykeman. Received equity training. Involvement with the Close the Gap plans and several members were involved with the outreach of the plan intercept survey. Added five new members to our committee, advocated for improvements to the Amboy Road Bridge after completion of the Wilma Dykeman Greenway, north of Hill Street. Discussed the need for trail etiquette measures on present greenways. And then policy recommendations, I don't have anything there for that yet which will, we have to have this report in by the end of this month. Upcoming goals I have put on develop an etiquette campaign plan with budget for signage on all greenways and online educational video to assist in the proper conduct of greenways, on greenways. Continue advocating for Swannanoa River Greenway and the Greenway Connections. Support the Asheville Unpaved Natural Surface Trail Plan with bike and hike partners. And then I list all of our members and our ex officio members. That's all I have so far. I need to um, put in our goals and our yearly planning schedules. I think that's it. Any comments? I'm going to be the, the, the fly in the ointment about my little pet project, and I don't know when it would be appropriate to have it as a goal to incorporate various art, particularly poetry, on the greenways. And if that's a goal or if that's just something we can think about for the future or where that stands. Lucy knows what I'm talking about, and I don't know. I think you do too, Claudia. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know if that's a goal or not. Or I that, think it would be. Don't you, Lucy? Or is it too early? Lucy, you're you're uh, muted. <laughs> How I'm going to I'm gonna get a tattoo now that says you're muted. Um, <laughs> if the committee feels like that should be a goal, then absolutely it should be a goal. And I think we could add that to something that we've done because um, we did work on some poetry on the Greenway this year. Right. We. Am Am I correct that we still have 190,000 for um, art on the uh, on the rad um, in in the rad for uh, green? I don't know if it's necessarily greenways or if it's elsewhere in in the rad, but I thought that there's yeah. still 190,000 with the with the new designer that that's been brought on for planning to take care right. of. Right, um, I believe that the public art plan already has dibs on where that money's going to go. Okay. Oh, okay. 
I can't recall, and I, I think I, I think the design center did that plan. I can't even recall if, if the greenways were part of that. I think it actually has more to do with some of the bridge supports. Probably. Yeah. I, I mean, if other members are kind of not clear on that, I have a proposal that I wrote. Well, Chris, you were part of, you were right in the beginning when I started this, or Lori and I started it, and Lucy, you've seen it. So if it would be helpful to send that proposal to people to get kind of an idea of what the thoughts are, I can do that. I think that's a very good idea. Okay. Um, and I think it, it could, it, for me, I agree that it should be one of the goals. What do the rest of you feel? Would you like to wait and read that first, or would you agree that we should add it to a goal? I think the um, goal in general is a great idea. Um, I don't know that we have to read the specifics before we um, approve that as a goal. But I, I definitely would like to read read the proposal. I'll, I'll yeah, forward yeah, I can have, today I can or imagine a general goal of incorporating natural, artistic, and literary creativity into the Greenway system. While I'm talking, Claudia, one thing that we did over this year that might bear mentioning was we met with representatives from the Fanta Flora Trail System and reviewed their oh, plans and how yeah. they'll, um, they'll tie into the Buncombe County Greenway System. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Was that this I year? I think that was mm -hmm. in 2020. It was actually was the thing right before lockdown. But we didn't submit a report last year, so we can put it in this one. Okay. <laughs> like last month. I know, right? It's crazy. So we met with the representatives of the Flora Fonta Trail and their desire to join, connect with the city, right? Yeah. County. Yeah. I'm writing it in right now, Claudia. Okay, great. And I would suggest bumping up in the order of things the um, equity training, okay. just in case order um, is construed with um, priority. I didn't hear all of what you said, Richie. I think Lucy got it. Lucy got it. Did you get it, Lucy? Well, I didn't move it up to anything. What you wanted to move it up on the list? Yeah. Is this chronological order or import of importance? Oh, well, that would be fine. I guess that would be the thing. Either say that these are in chronological order or move it up. So my question next is, do you all want to vote on adding Lydia's public art to the Greenway goals? If so, I need a... I think we should vote. I, I, I say we should vote for that. Was that a motion, Tony? I'll second that motion. It's a motion, yes. Okay. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay, it passed. Great. Thank you. And Elida, if you'll send out that information, I think it would be helpful just for everybody to have that. Thank you. All right. We're making some progress. Um, can we make this trail etiquette, um, this trail etiquette stuff? Can we make that? Um, you know, I mean, I guess just completing that um, one of the goals is, or is that already on the list? That's Let's already on the list. Okay, that's the first item. <laughs> okay. Um, are there any other goals that people would like to see added? Not at this time. Okay. Ex officio members are free to chime in. Anna, if you've got yes. any good ideas. 
Don't be shy. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you, Claudia, for putting all that together. Thank you for putting that all together. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad to do it. Um, uh, Lucy, do you want to talk about the calendar of our meetings for this coming Yeah, this we, we can do that, but does anyone have any policy recommendations that they would like to see added to this report? I'm not sure no, exactly they what, what they would be. We snuck up on something that might be a policy when we were reviewing lighting standards for new greenway sections and you know to simplify our work into the future maybe the policy would be once a greenway once a standard is is approved through the greenway commission that um it's the the favored option for future stretches you know i'd say particularly when it comes to utilities and rented or or, um, sourced items Well, that's a good point because I think it's important if it's going to be a good transportation um, area for people to ride to wherever they need to go there's going to be people that need to ride in the dark particularly during the winter months unless we can get things changed <laughs> Exactly. Um, you have a good point. If it's not usable to be able to drive to, to take the greenways to work and to take them home at night, um, it's not a transportation corridor. It's basically just a park. And I think the goal right. is to make it actually a transportation corridor. So it has to be accessible and usable more than just daylight hours. And I, I think. I agree. And, and lighting is not only just for is also a big issue for safety and as the city wants mm-hmm. to be safe without having more policing, a logical thing to do is provide lighting to provide a more safe area. Well, Mike, one of the things we learned when we did our uh, field trip was that mm-hmm. Duke Energy won't allow that on the west side of the French Broad River. Right. So I don't know oh, really? how that applies, but at least there's the east side where people can. Right. But there's a lot of other greenways um, that are going to be in areas that don't necessarily have a lot of um, visibility so that it, it, it's a little bit more dangerous. Um, I'm thinking of the um, the greenway that follows along the east side of the um, uh, I-26 corridor. That kind yes. of goes through, you know, residential and in woods and stuff. And if there's no lighting there, I, I think it's just um, uh, uh, becomes a, ma- a magnet for um, unsavory and, and just feeling uncomfortable going through dark areas. Yeah, I would think that anywhere where there's no lighting, you might want to have a sign that that it's closed. <laughs> but but you don't want it to be at daylight. But you don't daylight. want it to be closed. You want in in along the creeks and stuff. You want it to be available, right? Beyond just regular hours. And I think that's why it's a good good idea, as Richie said, that it's um, uh, that we provide lighting for it and make that a standard for the the greenways and and really advocate for providing lighting to provide additional hours of use on the greenways. Um, Maybe as a policy, to start from a policy perspective, because we could get, I mean, we could have all kinds of finer considerations, like a policy that we could adopt is that future greenway sections and existing um, be considered or, or be designed for safe 24-hour use um, in all ways possible. Yeah. You might say something like if it's feasible because if it's property that is owned by somebody else that we're going across and they don't want the lighting then that isn't feasible but I would say our policy should be we want to see Greenways being used as a transportation corridor, therefore, lighting is the utmost important. Yeah. 
We don't, we don't have to worry about the nuts and bolts because um, the city staff will add that. And, okay. and the gap plan will be addressing lighting too. Oh, good. But we should put it in our policy though, I agree. Yes. Okay, I I'll add. Did I hear, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, anybody, I think that really long, dark stretch on the Hominy section is also on Duke property and isn't allowed to have lighting. The stretch between the campground and the 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 canoe launch. Where is that? Uh, the, uh, it goes from the campground to the Hominy Creek Park down by French Broad Outfitters. Oh, on oh. the French Broad Greenway. Yeah. That's owned by Duke? I, I thought I had heard that light, the reason there was no lighting there was that, but I, I am I wrong? Yeah, um, we don't have any lighting on that section of the French Broad Greenway, but the Greenway that we're constructing right now, we looked into lighting it and they um, are not allowing us to put electric lights in there. Right, right. Okay. I, yeah, I just thought that stretch Who out. Who is not allowing it? That Duke. Duke on the property that they own of the yeah. where the f new section of the French Broad River West is being constructed. Oh, shoot. What was their, uh, the reasoning for that? Don't they want us to use their electricity? <laughs> Maybe we need to advocate for that. They probably just don't want to maintain it. I don't have the money to put it in at this point. <laughs> but, okay. I mean, Maybe we could, but I think we could advocate for it. Stuff react, uh, Maybe ask, be really careful about what you're asking for. But right now, the French Broad River West, um, we don't have plans to light, but the Wilma Dykeman is lit with the hoping that people who have to commute in the dark we'll will stay side. on the east side. Yeah, I think that when you have a parallel corridor, I think it's okay. But if it's the only route, then it's paramount to have some lighting. So maybe well, that's... Well, what would the city staff advise for the kind of policy that would, you know, work fiscally? You know, is it a general guidance or a prioritization that future greenways be accommodate 24 hour use or, or how would how would you well um, okay, so right now where we stand is that the Wilma Dykeman Greenway is the first greenway in Asheville that has lighting. Um, and it was a long discussion before we ended up getting it. Um, and we plan to put it on the um, Nasty Branch Greenway and the Swananoa Greenway. We do not have any plans to retrofit any lighting on our existing greenways. And I believe in the gap plan, we have different typologies of greenways. So we have our spine greenways and our arterial greenways and our neighborhood greenways. And the um, lighting, I think the lighting is only recommended on the spine greenways. Okay. Well, I'm okay. gonna, I don't remember right now, maybe the arterials too. We need to so, find out. Yeah. But if this is a, a policy recommendation that you want to work on, we can go into detail in a future month. And the course would be that you bring your um, suggestions to the Multimodal Transportation Commission and then they go to council. Okay. We'll put that in as a goal then. Okay. Add lighting to goals. And well, regarding the policy, should we say something like we would like to see more greenways have lighting? Uh, I put down lighting standards for greenways. Just write that. That's what I have okay. down right now on your policy recommendations. Okay. I think that, and then we can put it. Go ahead. Did, did Duke give you a hard, a hard no on lighting, or was it like, yeah, we can do it, but it's super expensive? It's in the lease that we signed that we are not Gosh. to put any electrical anything in there. Wow. 
That's hard to get around. And solar lights are um, have not been well received by staff because no one knows how or who yeah. will maintain this the solar lights. Right. We and I, my experience with solar lights in my yard is not really good. Okay. So we'll add lighting as a goal and we'll keep down what Lucy has down so far for lighting in um, as a priority. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any other comments? Any other policy recommendations? Okay. All right. That's the end of my report. Calendar of meetings, Lucy. All right. I'm waiting for it to open so I can share the link. It's going really slow. There we go. There we go. Boom. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and just put it up okay. as well. Ooh, that's tiny. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. Is that better? Can everyone see? Uh, let me see if I can make it bigger. Okay. Okay. Still hard to see. I'm blind. Are you working on your phone? That would be very Yeah, that's my problem. I'm on my phone. So yeah. um, we make these calendars every year, and um, this is just kind of use it as a roadmap of what we hope to achieve every month. Um, as you can see, every third month we have field trips lined up, and in December's um, we typically take December off, so whoever's interested in attending the Carolina Thread Trail Forum can attend that. Okay. Um, in, in a normal circumstance, um, those forums are held in Mooresville, North Carolina. It's a day-long event, and they're very, they're, they're very insightful and give a lot of good information, I think. Yes, I agree. I've gone to several. And I would recommend that we try to go if there is no um, <laughs> Omicron or whatever virus going on. This looks pretty good. Let's see. Does anybody have recommendations of field trips they'd like to take? I would like to see us do some of the uh, Asheville Unpaved proposed trails. Great idea. Yeah, that'd be great. I like that. Good. Where haven't we been for a long time? I'm trying to think in terms of, of stuff that's in our master plan um, that might be coming up on the list or or potentially go see something that's um, 
underway. Like it was really interesting to see the West Side French Broad while it was underway. Um, so maybe Nasty Branch while it's underway or something like that. Is is Swannanoa? Is there any section of Swannanoa that's that's walkable, or would be? Well, uh, the uh, section in front of um, Walmart. That might be a one a possibility. Are there any other cities nearby that have greenways that we might want to look at as um, just to get ideas from? Yeah, we haven't been on any of those in a long time. You know, the, the Thermal Belt Rail Trail is pretty cool in Rutherford. And I would recommend doing that before it gets too hot. Because most be a, of it's out in the sunshine. That would be a good one. Yeah, and it goes through Spindale, and where it goes through Spindale, there's, I hope they're not listening, there's some um, what not to do sections. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> um, are, is there any place that has um, the, the signage for... Um, etiquette that you might want to look at this for inspiration? No, there's Swamp not. Swamp Rabbit. Swamp Rabbit, there. yeah, Swamp Rabbit does have some. Yeah, it's got that interstitial signage. And there's also, you could, I don't know if anybody could offer it, but a corridor review of the Costa Trail um, from Brevard to Hendersonville. Yeah, some of it you could actually walk on where they've taken the rails out already. People are walking on it. Okay, that's that's a number. Huh. I'm writing this all down, sorry. Um So, how about if we have some updates from our ex officio members? Um, Chris, do you want to give us an update? Don't think yeah, I have any that, that are coming to mind. Okay. Yeah. How about Jack Henderson? Do you have anything? I think he had to leave the call. Oh, too bad. And Mike Sewell is not with us today, so I guess we don't have anything from that. Does anybody have anything else? If not, I'm going to suggest that we disband early. Do I have a motion? So moved. Can I, can I uh -oh. ask one thing before we go? I'm sorry. I sure. Back to the policy discussion. Um, I don't know. I don't know the policies that we have on the book, but um, did we want to consider any kind of formal policy about um, equity and use of the greenway system? Do we have anything? that is a policy or a guideline about how we prioritize future sections to promote equity or to consider equity? We do in the city, we have um, equity. Um, when we're doing capital project planning, we have equity as one of our criteria in prioritization and we have equity in the prioritization in the gap plan as well okay so. okay good what about um you just reminded me richie what about e-bike well i don't think we have any e-bike or e-scooter and some places do not allow e-bikes on their trails so i'm um, maybe we should work on that and especially oh yeah yeah i think it's something to consider I, I took a phone call from a woman who was on the city council of um rightful beach i think and they were considering a policy and um i mean 
everybody's handling it differently. Um, and it is more than e-bikes, as we mentioned earlier in our etiquette discussion, it's scooters and who knows what in the future. Um, so I guess I do think that that should be considered a little more broadly than just e-bikes, but, um, you know, I think, I think it's more than the, the vehicle, it's speed and use mm -hmm. and place. It's a behavior. Yes, I agree. I think e-bikes should definitely be allowed because as people are getting older, a lot more people are having to go to e-bikes. And I think about my husband, he can't, that's all he can ride right now. So I would hate to see a policy where they're not allowed on our greenways. Mm -hmm. But I think speed will handle that. That's just say Any bike on the greenway needs to be going under 15 miles an hour. And, and it's not even bikes because, again, there's the, the unowheels, the... Yes. Um, there's so many new devices now, and I don't think it's the the device should be um, banned. It should be the speed limit that should be banned. I agree. No speed limits allowed over 15 yeah. on the greenway. And that could be a uh, policy. I think that could be a, one of our policies. The speed limit policy? I'll make yeah. a motion to support a citywide greenway speed limit policy of 15 miles an hour. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Who was that? Thank you, Sonny. Great. All in favor, raise your hand. I think that's a much better way to do it than to say certain vehicle. Okay, good. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all your efforts. I think we accomplished a lot today. And um, we'll see you in a month. Claudia, and I then, think that um, this this policy recommendation should go to multimodal. Okay. Okay. And so instead of just automatically putting it in there, then to multimodal. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I, it doesn't need to go immediately, but sometime in the next couple of months, we should probably, um, okay. you should draft a letter to take to the multimodal. Okay. Okay. Maybe I should do that to both of those policies, the mm -hmm. lighting policy and the uh, speed limit. Okay. Well, I, I would you. like to, I'd like to work on the lighting policy. Maybe if me and Richie can work together on it, if he's interested. Okay. That's yeah, great. I've actually got it in the minutes of a goal to create a policy for okay. All right. lighting standards. Wonderful. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> Yay. I, I, I don't mean to belabor this one more, but this is one thing that has been sticking with me. Um, I believe the city has as a policy a no skateboard rule. That is true. Know. We're working on abolishing that law. It's a very okay. old law. And we don't, obviously, we don't enforce it. Okay. Do we need this? Is there anything helpful to adopt as a policy to push that forward? I think it's already in the works. Um, okay. But if you want to okay. include it in the policy, just to make okay. sure, we can do that in your report because it hasn't happened yet. So, yeah, I think okay. we should put it added in. With <laughs> That we would like to just say that we would like to have a policy reduce policy that. recommendations to allow skateboards on the city freeway system. Yeah. I put abolish the no skateboarding policy. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I think that's good. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey Claudia, for All your right. letter, for your letter to multimodal, make sure you include the reasoning behind this the speed limit policy. Yes. So we don't we don't want to restrict use or user types we just want to restrict speed. right mm -hmm. yeah right. Um, maybe I, this could be in the cover letter of the report to to multimodal okay great all right anything else thank all you right. thank You're you guys best. i appreciate it this this See meeting you. is adjourned at 444 thank you all right. Bye-bye, y'all.
everybody. Bye. That's magic number 444. Yeah, it is. That's fabulous. Bye, Luz. Bye, Claudia. Good job. Well, you know what it means that you're on the right path.